See you come in, dub seed up. Man, that was perfect. Yup, yup. Dub, 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 dub. Misha G, Crystal, Monique Hill, what up? How y'all doing? What's up, Monique? Miss Chris G, click on that link and come on up in here, bro. Y'all ready? Shanique will survive COVID and All Star Weekend. Boy, this is gonna be a good year. <laughs> for real, for real, man. Hey, that, that thing was really cracking down now. So we're going to see how the COVID came out of that. It's a lot of people gathering and stuff. Yeah, they was looking normal, wasn't they? Mm -hmm. With the kids all down there and everything. Everybody pushing on. Misha G, how you doing? What up, Bobby C, Asiatic Supreme, Black Warrior Spirit, American Negro. All of everybody in there. My man say, what's up? What up, homeboy? My other man say, what's happening? You know what it is? Steph, the new sniper. Who is Wesley Persons? Well, Dame tried to show him up on the last shot of the game, though. Dame is a killer. Yeah, he is. Natural born killer, man. I remember when he got Houston a few years ago and hit him like that and turned around. I said, man, this little nigga here is the truth. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new grandbaby, but that's way in October, man. That'll be the end of the year. Clay Lou, good looking out. That's what's up, man. Appreciate it. Yes, I do. Give your little girl, give your little granddaughter to go with your grandson, boy. That's gonna be a, a, a right on time, ain't it? That, that might never happen. Who gonna, gonna give me a girl? Huh? Who gonna give me a girl? Oh, you got another boy, another grandson? Oh wow, uh, I didn't hear that part. Right. Crips, Crips, and Serenium. Oh, uh, let's see now. Just click my name for the show. Can you guys look all right? I can't kick it right here, though. I'll talk to you all. I don't know. Loco, you want to answer that? What did he say? What y'all think of uh, the fool going at? The other fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, what do I think about the fool going at the other fool? I think they both. Uh, it's, it's some weird old stuff, man. But I, I, I seen what the little fool was saying. You know what I'm saying? Little skinny man. And then I, you know. So. But I ain't gonna never agree with him because the nigga done dissed the set and shit and doing all the extras, man. I ain't agreeing with nothing that nigga say. Top of the week, y'all. What's good? Loco, Kev, and nothing much, man. It's the end of the week for me, but you know. Hi, Chief. What's up, bro? Yeah, Asiatic Supreme. They had me laughing too, man. That was kind of classic right there. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, you know, nobody ain't gonna put them on. Yeah, man, I agree, man. I agree with that, man. The man was bragging on rape, man. Yeah, that's, that ain't never cool, bro. I mean, that's something that I don't know where they do that at and how everybody just letting them push all this different crazy stuff past them and get past them with it. Like, man, it's up here talking about raping women, man. And at the same token, talking about saving the kids. <laughs> How they go hand in hand? Programs, what do we want to hear? Anything you got to say? You're a self-admitted rapist. 
I don't. I don't never know rapists was cool, man. Yeah, so. yeah, what made you want to set the record straight in your comment video? Just looking for content. Just want to put some content together. And I just thought it was kind of weird that people threatened to take my channel down all the time, man. It's like you got white people creating content all over the world. And they don't say nothing about them. You got police killing black people all over the United States. And they don't say nothing about shutting them down. But can okay. Post an article, public record, and it's a problem. I didn't, I didn't do no story on the incident or, or no individual. I didn't even speak on it. I just posted an article. Articles are posted everywhere on their website. People on Instagram post, repost articles. There's newspapers sitting in doctors' offices and recycle places. I mean, come on, man. I just thought that was, that wasn't a concern for an individual. I thought somebody was just being emotional and their first reaction is to take a black man down. That's all that was. But it, a lot of that stuff, like somebody said, somebody left a comment. And I think it was one of the homies. He said, I'm acting more professional than loco when it comes to responding to haters. And my thing is, my thing is, get you a channel and let's see how you respond to the haters. The second thing was he said I was being emotional. Look at that fool. Oh, man. I just left J.D. Kiss, Lil' C, and Freeway Party. Okay, now, now the boy, the little skinny boy that we was talking about earlier, to be talking crazy about everybody, he said he was with J.D. Kiss and them. So, Shaniqua, was you with them too? Did you see little skinny man with the glass eye? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Super Bowl Fly and Sweetback influenced the black community nationwide, Miss Crystal said. Fly Bull said, I, I like hip hop uncovered. I saw you, Kev. Good looking out. Yeah, that's yeah. what they say. They say Superfly did, man. The boy says, sit down with Sid. Oh, Sydney. Sit down with Sid. Check y'all check out his new channel. Sit down with Sid. Let me see how his name. Man, sit down with Sid. I'm gonna show you look how it's looking over there first. Good looking out, bro. Loco, what did Kenneth McDuff say to you? He said, you look like you hurt yourself over there. I said, yeah. I was looking at him. I said, oh, this shit is crazy. I said, yeah, yeah. I got hurt out there on the wreck yard. All right. He just stood there. Stood in the it was like the cells in the solitary and the doors ain't never supposed to have been open like that. But they didn't count on me coming as an emergency to that holding, the main holding cell to get ready to go to, to the hospital. But I'm sitting right there in front of the full cell hmm. by, by 7, 8 o'clock in the evening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, killing kill me duff, bro. That shit was crazy. Yeah, he went to trial in Seguin. They had the trial in a neutral spot. So they end up housing him out there with us. And if you look at all the old footage of him, when he's coming out of the courthouse and he try to buck him, he try to jack away from him and shit, that's right downtown where I'm from. Yep, yep. Yeah, Red Henny. That was Ernie Hut. That was Ernie Hudson who screwed that woman to death in penitentiary too. He also played the warden in HBO Oz. Already, uh, Ricky McCoy, you kind of, you real, uh, you straight up about it. <laughs> I'm so high, I forgot what I just got through telling y'all about. Man. Yeah. Local, roll up a fat one for the players, yeah. man. Shit, come get this motherfucker, man. This bitch, this bitch hit uh, full of some crazy shit, too. 
All right, I'm going to mark this down. 31 minute mark. I got to cut the 31 minute mark out. What happened? You and the MMF words. Oh, man, my bad, bro. It, I be using them on mine. They don't say nothing. Man, they say something to me. I got to re edit all my stuff. I guess because you're in a thousand, you're in a hundred thousand club. <laughs> they were my other channel. Me. That's the other channel. Yeah. Well, they let they let me and you, me, you and Rockhead one night recently just say everything. They didn't trip off that one. Right. They said, "Kev Mac, you should interview the porn star Tony Everready." <laughs> Plus, he's an old school LA crib. That must be Shaniqua always ready, husband. No, nah, it's Ricky McCoy talking that. Whoever that is. Yeah, I'm saying Shanique was an ever ready, uh, every day, ever ready energizer bunny. Mm -hmm. Killer McDuff. Yeah, that's what we was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I give a damn about him. Yeah, but he's a big tall mother. I'm about 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> He's standing in the door to my look like you're hurt. I said, man, what the fuck is that? I didn't imagine he was that big, man. Big old white boy. Shanika was cleaning up, twerking, huh? Kev, I like to interview some time, brother. You know, I get that. Lately, I've been getting that every day. And I just ain't trying to do too many interviews, man. I really want to be behind the camera, not in front of the camera. No disrespect to you or your platform. I just, I think it's better that I don't do interviews, man, and I try to be seen less often, man. Because uh, I've been explaining, but now it's even more clear to me. If I go do an interview on somebody else's channel or whatever, I'm not going to have the rights to none of that. And what people going to do, they going to, they're going to download, download it, cut, cut it, it, and put, put me in there. He got an interview with Boo-Boo. With Who? Boo-Boo Boo -Boo last name, Herrera. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm just, I'm speaking for me. I ain't speaking yeah. for Boo-Boo. No, because I ain't even speaking on the fact that you're letting them know. I'm just letting you know what I've seen about the uh, channel. Yeah, because just recently, man, as recent as today and yesterday, somebody made videos with me in them, man, without asking me and um, informing me ahead of time. They didn't get at me until after they posted the video. And I just don't think that's cool, man. I, I don't think it's cool because people take, a, take what I'm saying out of context and make it so it fit their agenda. And I just, I'm cool on that, man. It's took me too long to get to where I'm at as far as credibility. And I just, I don't want to go down that road, man. That wasn't cool, man, at all, man. And, and whoever done that, just going to show you the type of people we got in this world, man. They know that wasn't cool. OG Steve, what's up, bro? The homie Coffee Loke is watching the live. Got to support the platform. All right. Copyright infringement. And how's it a copyright infringement? It ain't my video. They ain't infringing on my copyrights. There's nothing I could do about it. But like I told Loco, even if it was, I still probably wouldn't even bother them people, man. It's just the fact that somebody can think something, whatever their agenda is, they can think it's cool and they got it solid and then just take something and I said, throw it in there like I'm participating in their agenda and agreeing with their agenda. And then the fact that it's Kev Mac, I really ain't think of my partner right there. I ain't nobody, right? But to say I did a video with Kev Mac or I got Kev Mac on here, it's like you're using my name for clout for ratings and everything. What up, here, G? What up, Kev Mac? How you feeling? All right. This is my partner, Loco, right here, man. How you what up, doing, Loco? How are you? Oh, man, I'm good, bro. Oh, that's good. I was up in the store, Kev. That's why I ain't picked the phone up. I was around some people, but I was checking y'all out. Oh, my bad. Sometimes I forget you're a celebrity, man. 
I ain't no sleep. Come on, man. You got albums out, uh, documentaries out, and still don't have no good Wi-Fi. I got, I'm going to kick him out, man. He froze. Oh, wait. You Yo, back? You see me? Yeah, you I see, see you. you. You know you're dark as hell, so it's kind of hard to see you in the dark, right? Yeah, I know, man. I'm a real black man. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> hey, turn the light on. Hey, they say Hen G and Evil E, the legends. Yeah, we cool, Kev. You was there in the beginning. You was there in the intro. Back in the Say day. that again. I said you was there in the intro back. To yeah, yeah. I met y'all after y'all landed in LA, man. Y'all was my connection to New York, man. Y'all was way ahead of the game, yeah. man. Yeah, man. I know, man. Fortunately, we still here, so that's a good thing, man. I'm in the cut right now, developing a lot of new cats right now. So, you know, right. on that note. And I can't wait to do that thing that me and you talked about the other day about hip hop from the east to the west, me, you, and Hassan. Yeah, man, we got to do something. I thought about something, man, uh, this morning. I said, damn, he ain't said, if we ain't getting no money, you know, we got to be wise. And I'm saying to myself, basically, you said you ain't going to New York. We ain't going to New York until we know it's cracking. I mean, we're putting it together because we know everybody, you know, I'll put some stuff in the computer, you know, so. It's going to be cool, you know, the history of all us three connected to the, you know, uh, us three, the connections we got. It's basically we know everybody, Hassan, yourself, and myself. So, you know, right. a lot of the cats from back in the days. So, yeah, man. I'm trying to get in touch with Kid Jazz, man. What's his first name? I don't know. I talked to Donald. He in Europe. He said he don't, man, he don't mess with yeah, I talked to Donald for a long time, man. Something McCoy, ago. man. Something McCoy. I get his government name from um Donald. He could give me that. Give me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get him yeah, to him, man. He a crazy First cat, man. but he was around, man. Yeah. He had a little sipping problem, man. That's why, you know. He had a little sip sip problem back then. Still in the day. got one apparently. That was his issue. How's uh how's Evil E doing? He ain't froze, man. He looking mean. That's how you be looking loco when somebody troll you. You froze on my ear here. I I hear your little pit bull. Yeah, man, Duke, man. Look, Duke is gangster. Say, what's up, Duke? <laughs> yeah, that's my little dog, Duke. <laughs> you can see me now, though, right? Nah, you froze, but I hear Duke. Okay, Duke. Duke, be quiet, Duke. I'm working. Duke, oh. Duke, Duke sound like a dog Leela would have at home. That's my head of security, man. You sound like you're suffering here, G. Nah, <laughs> somebody out the door, he's screaming. When somebody walking up to the front gate, he just... You know, uh, let me know. Hey, you know, we go way back, man. Remember how everybody used to bag on each other? Oh, yeah, man. That's yeah, we what we be doing on day. here, man. We bag on all our guests. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Ken Do, Mary J's husband, and all of them? And all, you yeah. know, a lot of them cats. A lot of cats that we kicked it with kind of was in the scene. If it's not, they. Yeah, your your connection is messing up. We can't even hear you no more. I was. Uh, hey, Hen, I'm gonna kick you out. Come back in. All right. Give him one more try. Yeah, that's him, man. He always been cool with me, man. Yeah, you can just tell that quick. He don't give a damn about no cap and right bagging on each other. No, love to do that. That was his thing back in the day. I guess now he older. He think he mature or something. That's right. That was his thing, though. He bagged on everybody, bro. I remember one day I came over his house. He said something about my ears. That was the worst thing he could hear. Everybody in the house was on him about his ears. Oh, shit. 
So they just came and posted up in LA. Did this shit. Yeah, they moved it. They moved to LA like in 82 or something like that. From New York City. Right. Yeah, that's good, bro. Okay, yeah. man. Back. So I was asking how your brother doing. Oh, he was cool, man. He was moving around, you know. It's getting ready to clear up. So we got, you know, some stuff we're gonna put on the calendar. Go out of the country, a couple of things here, you know. So we're just working, building a lot of losses, you know, this past year. So we re upping. We're trying to stay strong. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, crazy times right now, man. How's yeah. Fetty doing with the music? Oh, Fetty got some shit, man. Fetty and M Dot. M Dot's from Detroit. And Fetty's from Watts. That's you know, that's Tookie's nephew, Ice T's um, protege. He's doing pretty good. He's doing some so he did a couple of songs with a lot of the um cats in um Detroit, and then he did one with Bino out here, the one that was with Nipsey, you know, Bino, um, and um Bordeaux. And um we're just working, man. You know, the relationships we got. I mean, I kept myself relevant by hanging out, you know, with the youngsters and showing them the way to get a lot of these cats that's hot out here on there, um, be, be, to be associated with a lot of these cats so they can get, you know, piggyback and get some airplay and make relationships and do the movies and TVs, the same format that Ice did, you know, the Ice-T format. So, Who's the hottest Mexican or Latino rapper in L.A. right now? I got one called Namek, you know, and there's King Little G. And there's a lot of other ones that got more so respect and lyrical content for me because, you know, I speak Spanish, but a lot of them speak English. But the, you know, the cadence they got is the kind of the Chicano cadence. But King Lil G, um, he's pretty hot. And Namek, Namek is my artist. He's doing a couple of songs. He's doing one with Battle Cat in a few weeks. He did one with um, Crooked Eye. Um, the Bone Thugs family support him. The, the Dog Pound. He's a Mexican cat. G-Funk, in a sense. And there's other ones. I like Mr. Capone. No, Mr. What's his name? What's that nigga name? Criminal Mr. Criminal. He's pretty hot. So, and they got a lot of youngsters too, Kev. That I don't yeah. even know. G Baby from 18th Street. Is that what you're talking about? And I don't know them no. over there, man. I know the cats are basically more so coming into the commercial market. You're talking about the ones that are basically in the streets right now. Right. Ready. So, yeah. Right, right. You know? Yeah, man. Now, you, guys, now, there's a bunch of Mexicans I'm talking to, to also that are put together like the thing called the Art of Rap Latino. Um, We did the Art of Rap. Well, Ice was interviewing a lot of cats, you know, a lot of our friends and stuff, Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, you know, Kanye. So I'm doing the Latino version of that. I'm going to send you the teaser. Uh, Ice is narrating that, too. It's called Auto Rap Latino. It's basically the culture of Latinos in rap. They don't have to speak Spanish or not, just, uh, you know, the bloodline, the, their DNA, just Latino, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Salvadorian. And I'm basically one of the ones that's the only ones that can kind of, like, get along with all of the right. Latinos, because I'm in the middle. My family's from Honduras, and, you know, I'm chocolate. I'm black like Wesley Snipes. So, you know, that's a, a negative but a positive because it's a more so of a culture versus a look for me. So you you know my upbringing, Kev. So, so look, so they know you speak Spanish. You don't never hear them talk about Mayate and all that behind your back, huh? I hear all that shit, but that shit don't phase me from Brooklyn, man. Them words don't kill me. I just sit there and play <laughs> blonde for a second. You know, right, they get too close right. is another situation, but you know, that shit never fazed me, man. So I hear it all the time, Kev. A lot of racist shit. I couldn't really get off on the Spanish hip hop stuff when I came out here because um, you know, I was too dark for the situation out here. They didn't look at us like that. So the reggaeton came in, you know, after the Spanish hip hop and here I am doing it now, but not the reggaeton. But I'm saying it was kind of like jealous in the T V world too, because I was in there doing a lot of interviews and showing them that I know your pit bulls, your fat Joes, you know, the ones in hip hop. So they didn't really see that out here. More so in New York, because the Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans are more so niggas. I mean, they black in a sense. Over here, you know, we all should be the same, but it's different. It's more separation out here. Yeah. Right. Are there any reggaeton artists that you like? I mean, they cool. That's too much of a man. You know, I know Daddy Yankee and other ones that did the first you know, the first generation, but the new ones, there's a lot of them. I have interviewed quite a few of them, but there's a lot of them, so I don't really, you know. So they, a lot of them are turning into trap music now, so they're doing the trap thing right now. Reggaeton's kind of old school in the culture. Damn, that was quick. Yeah. So that's what that is. Man. But I got some heat, man. I got some stuff, man. It's, you know, I was told to really own the Spanish market. Because, um, you know, we did the gangster rap. We were the first ones doing that. So. But um, that's something that, you know, Ice takes the claim for that. We're his guys. You know, we were there with him. But 
on a general major um, situation, um, my guys told me to take over the Spanish hip hop thing. So that's my mission right there because nobody owns it. So that's my shit. Even though I got a lot of hot cats that y'all be hearing in a second that Ice and I put together final level music, you know, so we got a couple of cats, M. Taylor, Fetty DeMarco, Six Easy, he's from Midwest. We got Namek, he's Mexican. And we got a singer, Daniel Peters, he's pretty hot. You know, he's like, his name Daniel Peter, he's like the white Chris Brown he calls himself. So he's pretty hot, he's singing on all the songs. You know, so, got a little army, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna send you some shit, Kev. Hey, a little, a little off subject. Um, and it's kind of personal, but I want to ask you a question. I know you lost both parents recently. Was yes, any sir. of it due to COVID? Um, they say that. I know my mom. They cut your mic off because we're talking about COVID. Oh, oh okay. now. Okay, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they said COVID, you know, on the death Every time you say COVID, the government shuts your microphone down. They don't want to hear your answer, man. Something ain't right. We, well, can't, hear, we can't hear you, Hen G. Your microphone's gone, bro. They're going to have us like North Korea. Yeah. Yeah, it's not working here. Let's go out one more time. We'll just try it one more time and then call it a night, bro. Yeah, damn. He said on those mom death certificate, it say COVID. Wow. That's pretty hard in New York, man. Man, he had some good parents, man. They was cool. The moms was always at home, but pops was a hard working father, man, to just he did what he had to do for his family, man. All right, let's try it again here. Yeah. All right. So they said Miles passed from COVID? Yeah, they said it was COVID. And Pops passed the day of, they said um, he was positive. Uh, he wasn't he was positive, positive when he walked in there. You Ooh. know, he was in there, so. See, that been my fear. I don't want to go to the doctor because I might walk in like your father, man. And yeah. Walk in with no COVID and walk out with COVID. Now, my pops was in a nursing home, then they put him in there just to check him out. Then all of a sudden, you know, he was so strong, and um, he he passed, and they said well, it was, as I was saying, positive COVID. He didn't have it. You know, that's like, you know how that is. I think the bed is like 50 stacks if somebody dies or something like that. Yeah, they would get like money. That. Yeah, they yeah, probably got money, money for that. Yeah, and the doctors is, is just, just horrible, man. You know, they're trying to get people out the floors. You know what I'm saying? So they got so many, they had so many people on the floor, on the hospital floors, they didn't have no time to maintain and they were scared themselves. So they was just checking out, like not even taking care of them. Mm. So that's what that was. And G, my condolences go out to you, big homie. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you very much, man. For sure. Yeah, my condolences. I know both your parents, man. Uh, my condolences, bro. Thanks, man. Kev, you know my mom, she knew everybody came to my house. Dre, Pop, everybody in the beginning, old body count, Greg. Greg. Everybody came. My Everlast, uh, Dub C, Coolio, Aladdin, Tony, J everybody. My mom's in them was the hip hop parents. Rest in peace. Thank God for them that they let us play music loud as fuck. So if they didn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> we wouldn't be who we are now. So, hey, now yeah. that you say that, they I never remember them saying turn the music down in your room. <laughs> oh, nah, man, it was rocking the whole block. You know that, Kev. So, <laughs> shit. When I first came to LA, I looked at it like, damn, man, you know, I love the, I, I seen the gangster stuff and everything. I kind I loved it. I could relate to and see who was who. So I kind of admired it in the beginning. I got along with the worst guys, you know, that Kev, you know, so I didn't even knew you was active till the story that I always say when I seen you at the sports arena, you said, hold on for a minute. And then you and your whole team jumped on the stage and then you came back and we was watching the show. I'm like, wow, I didn't know, man. It was kind of, I was naive to the fact, but I enjoyed the, um, you know, the the energy and the the unity in a sense. Because I played for Blue Red Essays and everything when we first came out here, before I was on K Day as a mix master. So, you know, yeah, I remember. I remember the story. I always remember is we was at the Palladium one day. And I'm like, "Hey, what's up, here? And we talking, we kicking it and shit in the middle of the floor. And I yeah. look, 
And I said, yes, hey, Ian, I got to go, man. I, I talked to you. And we went over there and tore that concert up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all tore it up. You're like, yo, Han, I'll talk to you in a minute. Y'all niggas ran on stage. I'm like, what the fuck? It was crazy, man. That was crazy, man. That was crazy. Oh, man, I laughed. Oh, man, I laughed. That was early, funny. Man. Early L.A., man, it was interesting, man. I seen everybody developing from the... From the um, you know, to the white t-shirts, the big white t-shirts before that was, you know, before everybody's wearing those, you know. So I seen the conversion, which that integrated all over. Everybody wearing the white tees. That's from Los Angeles, I might I could say. But you know, them that era, man, the white t-shirt era when y'all used to wear the big white tees, and I used to come out looking like Run DMC because that's what they wore in the, in New York, and then niggas was laughing at me. I was like, oh shit, they don't even know. So and now all New York. I could I could take the claim for bringing New York to the L.A. We right, know that we're gonna course. put something together on that note, you know. So. Yeah, that's what that's what you should focus on. But you know what's funny? Everybody knew y'all was from New York, and they would say, "I seen your friends from New York because y'all would rock the Adidas with the fat laces." Oh yeah, yeah, it was the first with the fat laces, you know. So exactly, man. We had fun, man. It was a lot of fun. We're gonna bring that back again, Tom. Um, um, Kev. You know, we, we do the music, man. That's what we do. It's, it's it's in our DNA. We rock the party, man, till it don't stop. We still could do that with these young cats too, and our generation. I don't know if it's gonna be online. I know you're gonna open up, but it'll be interesting once they open up again. You know, what I'm saying after this, I, I don't know when this should have finished though. But when these clubs and events and all of that, they say April first they opening. Right. I'm not gonna be out there like that. Shit, no. <laughs> I won't either. But I sure it sure is tempting to go to a Dodger game when they open up. Oh, uh, this nigga with baseball again, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. What's up with Africa Islam? Is is in London, man. I mean, I don't know. I ain't talked to Is in a while. I see him online. You know, everybody don't talk like before, man. It's kind of crazy, man. It's kind of different. So look, let me ask you a New York question. This just popped in my head. When y'all was young, what year did y'all move to L.A.? 1980 what? Exactly, 81, I think. Okay. So when you was in Brooklyn, right? Uh-huh. What was the relationship like with the Bronx? Was y'all getting along or what? I was kind of young, Kev. I mean, I respected them because they started hip-hop. But, you know, listen to KRS-One's records, man. Listen to um, Haitian Jack in that Big U um, documentary. Brooklyn keeps on taking it. You know, Bronx keeps creating it, and Queens keep on faking it. <laughs> I know if my man here from Queens, he's gonna look at me crazy, but you know that's how it was back in the days. Actually, we mobbed up from Brooklyn. My people did. I was the hip hop cat, stayed in Brooklyn, the sports cat. But I knew all the worst cats that is in the history books right now. You know, so those friends of mine. I got a story on that when we was in the New Music Seminar, but I'm tired. I'm getting ready to get off the phone right now, man. Okay, retire. All right, bro. Take it easy, man. I see you getting high. Tell your tell your little beagle get up there hard, man. All right, man. I'll tell my God, fam. Y'all stay up, man. Good talking to you, Kev. All right, for sure. Peace, All right, Peace. All right. All right. Yeah, 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 man. They was K Day Mix Masters. I think they was on KGFJ too. All right. Yeah, they was doing their thing in the early 80s. That's real tough. That's real shit. Yeah, man. They early pioneers of hip hop in LA. That's why I laugh when I hear some of the some of the rappers that be on these these social medias talking about early hip hop in LA. They leave all the the, the first players out. Only one they always mention is Egyptian Lover. Lonzo. Not really. Not really. They uh. They, no, I ain't talking about Alonzo from Tree Gang. I'm yeah, talking about Alonzo from Compton. Yeah, I know. No, I don't even hear him mention him. But, you know. Kev, you get my little PayPal yesterday? ZG. ZG asked you that. What's up? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that had to be you. Yeah. Well, actually, I got two yesterday. But yeah, I'm sure I did. Good looking out. I hear Brooklyn had to stick up kids. Brooklyn keeps on taking it. And my nigga, that was the beginning of the shit. Yeah. Like, well, that, that video was from like 70, 70 
I don't no, know. It was 88. It was 88. That was, oh, it was just the grain in the film. Yeah, because it was a old yeah. little bitch. Right. But I got uh, I got another one that I'm having converted. It'll be ready in a week. I don't see that on YouTube nowhere, but a lot of people are familiar with this one. A lot of people seen it, but since it's not on YouTube, at least I couldn't find it. I'm going to upload that one, too. That's right. Is Doc still in Texas, loco? Doc, oh, the DLC, yeah, he's still in Dallas, so yeah, yeah, in detail. Well, we loved him when he came in LA, boy. That nigga was dope. Man. That nigga was dope. It's the formula. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Man, that nigga was cold. Yeah, you represented for Texas, West Dallas Project, man. That's what, that's what uh, you from West Dallas. I don't know if you from the project. Thank you from the projects, though. But you from West Dino for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the homies out there. That's what the homies that on West Dallas Project sixty. How did you feel, Kev Mac? How did you feel about Ta Taquan Cox stab took it? Who was that? He said did. There's newspaper articles on that. Man, because I don't know. This shit been, you know what been twisting me up? Monique, I want you to hear me. You talking about OK Loco. Monique, I don't even remember what the hell I even <laughs> <laughs> Man, when I tell y'all I get high, man, look at this shit, man. I mean, goddamn. What you expect me to do? It's that space queen. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe your memory out. Look at that. This boy got a new name. Every bag he get. <laughs> That's this space queen, man. I found him kind of loco. Y'all not leaving me out. Shaniqua, I thought you knew his shit already. Yeah, Kev going to put, put, my, put my little blue blast, my little blast stuff for who, who don't know about it. But yeah, man, uh, well, Trap Star Films, you know, and they just the whole little catalog blast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hit a guy in jail, man. I just be clowning me and my nigga. That's all we do, man. When I be with Kim, we laugh, man. We be laughing shit about shit. Tripping out on motherfucker. Eating and shit. We got to get back to my little Hawaiian place, cuz. L&L. Oh, yeah. You don't even go around now, huh? We went that one time, man. Yeah. Me and, I think Stan. I think that was me and Stan that went. Stan, did you like that? Did you like that uh, um L and L Hawaiian barbecue? Stan, Stan Stan probably ain't even on no more. Stan just checks in and check out. Oh, okay. An interview with DOC is definitely the one I'm looking forward to, Kevin Mac. Loco probably got better action than I do. Man, DLC still active in the game, man. Right now, the dudes in, in the world opening back up, life the change on this internet and everything else. That's what we haven't spoke on. I think it's a good conversation. A whole lot of these lives and all that stuff right there, man, they gonna show be paid attention to because everybody finna get busy again in this world. Oh, palm trees, palm trees, L and L is all right. <laughs> Stan said, "Yes, sir." Already, man. Yeah, that's my spot right there. We didn't even go to the one you take me to. We went to they, they brother or sister oh, um, man. right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. The one on Maryland. We go to the one on Maryland Parkway. And what's that? Maryland Parkway and something else. That's where you think Sahara, right? Yeah, yeah, Sahara. Yeah. Sahara and Maryland Parkway. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, Asiatic Supreme said, my homie in South Dallas says, Damo City. Man, I'm telling you, man, it's a big uprise, man. I trip out when I be seeing Dallas. Like, I remember back in the game, when in Oak Cliff, I never really heard about no bloods being out there. Shit, Oak Cliff ain't nothing but bloods, man. My bad, uh, spooked by the door. My nigga gonna edit this stuff, bro. Oh, I didn't even catch it. He said, said something again. Yeah. He said, Loco, that's 15 MFs, cuz. My uh -huh. bad. 
Let me see. That was at what the one hundred four mark. I swear, man, I didn't know that. You got to just go over there and watch it again, bro. No, nah, when I do the editing, I'll, I'll find it. Okay. I'm not finna go through no whole two hours of nothing, man. I don't have that type of patience. So I'm gonna have to get that all the way out of my vocabulary or something, man. Loco, what's your thoughts on on that fool? I seen some of his latest Vlad interviews. I think he's just freestyling, Gabriel. I think eventually all this is gonna come crashing in on that guy, and it's gonna be real, real messed up for him. I mean, he's he's basically uh, giving the cops a, a chance to close cases on a whole bunch of rapes. That fit his- <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how Fort Worth police think. They like, oh, okay, you self admitted rapist, huh? You run around here talking about raping white women and killing white people and standing over them laughing and all that. They got a yeah. On, just wait, just sit back and watch. Watch the show. Get your popcorn ready. Yeah, it ain't gonna be no fun when they start filing cases. I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. Do so you can do all that and clown and act a little goofy fool. We never seen nobody do it because it wasn't supposed to be done. So because of that, they figuring out a way, man, to do this guy uh real real justice around here. So man. I do good, I do good better than not mentioning his name than MF. Man, yeah, flap, yeah, all the way to the bank. But Vlad gonna be uh, laughing all the way to putting that 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 uh interview, all the old scene, all that when when he thought the camera was off. Vlad sending all that to his buddies in the FBI. Man, I yeah. a long time ago, before all the controversy. You're going to go to Vlad because he got numbers. Yeah. And as other people say, I don't know, man. I mean, you guys going crazy over that one dude out there in Texas. Last time I checked, Texas was the South. Uh, are people ignorant? I apologize. You know what I mean? Because I know everybody ain't ignorant. And I know... We shouldn't talk down on each other like that, but I'll just be trying to mix the truth and be respectful at the same time. Yeah, that's real talk, bro. Hey, um, the boy Dre James said, I saw colors. And he, he's quoting this, this damn fool that we talking about with the glass eye. I saw colors and decided I'm going to give my life to gangbanging. You, you passed it up, Kev. You got to go back. It's up in the chat. But he was just saying that that's how stupid it sounds. He say, I watched Colors and I dedicated my life to gang banging, but I didn't get down until I got locked up. <laughs> that's dumb as shit, ain't it? Or am I tripping? I don't know. I don't see it. I don't understand it. It's, a, it's a, I do. That was what dude has said. He just quoted him. That's what dude said on Vlad. Man. Yeah. It's just funny though. It's funny how that one dude, how that one dude, he, you know, because I don't, I don't pay no mind. But just a couple of people sent me the link, so I've been sharing and talking to people about it all day. But it's funny how he try to shit on California, and then say the stuff that they doing in California is goofy and they weak and all that. But you, 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 you claim you was a sixty. You claim you was with all that. It's like, and then you're talking about raping white women. If you know anything about the culture, I don't give a damn if it's California or if it's Texas. It ain't cool to go around raping and bragging about that. That ain't that that ain't no power. Ain't no power in that. Ain't no honor in that. Like the whole time you shitting on California, you shitting on yourself. You making yourself look weak and soft as hell. And then the fools say all of us do it. Man, y'all going on, man. Y'all know y'all are. We all do that, man. We all going to rape something, man. And I'm like, man, what is this cat talking about? No, I'm not. I'm he not said gonna- every real nigga, every real nigga done raped something. <laughs> That's why I ain't never been real. I'm telling you, I've been a buster forever. I'm going to be a buster. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mark. Nigga, I don't make- know what's real. What make you real about taking something from a woman, first of all? Second of all, that belongs to her. That's her privacy. That's her private parts you taking. 
But it looked crazy, but I don't so, care if you white, blue, black, brown, red, yellow, whatever you are, you you a woman. How you gonna take that from that woman and then turn around and laugh about it? Look what Dre, okay, so look, this nigga gonna say too in the interview, Dre James is on that nigga head. That nigga said his feelings was hurt when he realized Ice Cube wasn't a real gangster. And then, and that's what I say. <clears throat> that's what I tell my folks on the West Coast. <laughs> Some dudes, some <laughs> dudes, some individuals, they think they be saying some gangster stuff, and I'm talking about outside of California. Say, think they be saying some gangster stuff, and the whole time we see right through that. Like you, you thought Ice Cube was gangster, like so. Your whole thing is fairy tale. You, you know, you bought into that. You bought into the fact that he, nothing but a celebrity rapper and actor. You bought into that. Like, how can we respect your judgment? That nigga's doing what, what that nigga, what, 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 what Fitzgerald said. That nigga saying anything to get views, man. Of course, of course. We, he's saying a lot of the same stuff, though. Yeah, and that's stuff that, and so it's just like if you go, when you go to church, a lot of the things that the preachers say, it's stuff that we already know. All this dude is doing is trying to get people's attention. So he can get money and he can win on YouTube and laugh at everybody and say, look how I played on y'all. But in the process of doing that, he did a lot of people the wrong way. And I'd like to see how you're going to maneuver through this big old world and not come across no no hostile uh, situation by what you did, man. Disrespecting these people, disrespecting the dead, naming people, naming their hoods. I'm talking about, man, you name it, this guy done did it. And it's gonna come a day. The game will catch you, man. The game will spank your butt, man. The game will spank your ass. So, yeah, the game, the game will catch up to you, my brother. Tell you, bro. I mean, but you, you just can't disrespect everybody. You know what I learned before I went to prison? When I first started going to jail, this is what I learned. I learned from some older dudes because, of course, I was young then. But older dudes in the county jail used to say, "You gonna mind somebody." Like, you're not going to always be the toughest, hardest person. And if you are, guess what? They got a place for you. So you ain't cool on the street, you go to the county jail. You go to the county jail, you ain't cool, you go to the hole. The hole ain't good enough, you're going to prison. You ain't good enough in prison, you're going to the shoe. You know what I mean? If the shoe ain't good enough, you're going to death row. Now what you going to do? So I learned that. I learned that, man, when I first started going to jail. Like, man, you can't just portray yourself as the toughest dude, and you can't portray ain't nobody going to do nothing to you because it's going to always be a place for you. That's right, bro. You know that. You know that. Jail is something, man, that ain't to be played with, you know. But if you're a real one and you're a real soldier, man, in the game anyway, just in your spirit, you're going to make it. You're going to do what you have to do. You're going to be somebody in there. The game life gonna continue for you, and all the things you was doing out here is gonna be open to you in there if you want to get involved and get it in. You know, when you're a buster and you come out here telling all these lies and all these different stuff, like I say, the stuff gonna catch up with God, and you don't hear, man, you done went to another level with it. You was dissing the blacks, and it was okay. The white man was laughing at you. He, he said, "Look at this coon, all this boy out here dissing his people. He's tearing his people up. You know what I'm saying?" I didn't say it then, did I? Um, no. I didn't say that no. word. Did I? No. Yeah, he said, man, this clown is over here dissing his own people. Ha, ha, ha. And then you screwed up, buddy. When you made a statement and said, I stood over that man and I laughed at him. Ha, ha, ha. Don't holler. Don't talk to me if you ain't killed no white man. And if you don't won't kill white men and and you go I you was sad when Ice Cube and you found out Ice Cube wasn't a real gangster and and all this old fake bull corn man and people are actually like Fitzgerald said we've said it already though homie we need to I mean I don't really tune into the guy actually I mean I'll be seeing a whole lot of the stuff it'd be on other people's channel. You know he do interviews for other people so I click on every now and then see what this clown talking about but Man, dude gonna do what he do, man. Like I say, all that can be good. He can have a healthy, big old, huge YouTube career. But what you do, you gotta maneuver through this life. You seen Mo3 couldn't even get away from it. 
Watch what happens, man. I'm telling you, man, dude live in a real jealous hearted, real evil city. A real evil city, man. A real evil city. And they ain't gonna rest till they look up his address and do all the crazy stuff that people do, man. So And it's crazy because if you if you listen to people on YouTube and Instagram, I mean really listen and pay attention. It's a lot of jealous hearted people, man. And that and and I notice I said people, I didn't say men. Women too, man. The women that be Instagram models and trying to be models, they just be sitting there thinking everybody hating on them. Yeah. And the whole time their comments be really, they hating on other women. Exactly. And, and, and calling them bees and everything else, man. Calling them hoes and everything else. But if you, if you claim you not having sex. you just taking pictures. What make you think the other girl ain't doing the same thing you're doing? Because you know you're lying because you ain't just taking pictures. you having yeah. sex. That's why all the ball players now is getting their women off Instagram, off social media, off OnlyFans, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they holler yeah. the woman, throw some money at them, fly them into town, fly them into Florida and wherever else. And then next thing you know, they fall in love with him or put a baby in. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who they think they fooling, man. But I, I kind of think when you're young, you don't realize that people see right through you. Like like our mothers would tell us, who broke, who broke dishes? And you'd be like, I don't know. It wasn't me. But the whole time, your mama know wasn't nobody home but you. Man, come on, man. These girls been on the track at 12, 13 years old, man. Yeah, yeah. So you know the dude putting them out there ain't a classmate. <laughs> you feel me? Mm-hmm. So there are people that prey on young women. It's, it's, it's no defending that. Yeah, man. I, I don't know why, man. We used to always be the one roast and be like, you know, my old ass niggas over there, you know, trying to holler at them. You know, that wasn't cool with us. You know, even then, I think we knew as kids we didn't like that. That wasn't... That wasn't appropriate. It wasn't right. You know? But you got to realize we were just coming out of a time when our, our ancestors and stuff, man, was marrying people 10 or 15 years older than them, and it was okay. Like, right. back in the old days, you know, right. a man could be 35 and a woman could be 18, and the mama would push out the door like, that's a good man. Right. Like, my sister claimed my mother didn't her like that. My mother went to her grave saying she didn't. And my sister, other sister, say she, the one you met, say she didn't either. But um, oh. Crystal. Crystal. So what so if we feeling? All I dated was older cats, but I didn't look at my age. So that was my point. So let me clear. Let me read. How you say it? Read whatever it is. Joe Biden moment. But look, so that's what I was saying, though. So in cases like this, okay, here's Crystal. Chris, Crystal willing to... To mess with local, he's 46 years old with 14 kids. And then, uh-huh. hypothetically, hypothetically. And then, your mama get mad at local because local won't buy her no groceries or pay her insurance bill. So now she turned local in. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's situations where a dude ain't necessarily, yeah, reiterate, thank you, ain't um, necessarily. You know, like as bad as we might paint him out to be, but he got railroaded because your mama was mad that he wasn't looking out for her. Or he might, she remember I told y'all a story about I went to meet a girl and uh, her mama liked me. Her mama was like, you got to talk to me first. Sometimes the mama get mad because you like the kid and not her. The single mama won't help to take care of the broad. So she looking at you to mess with her, not the baby. You feel me? So that that's what happens sometimes, Crystal. The mamas get mad. They get jealous and they turn you in. Or, again, it could be somebody your age dating an older man, and they get mad at you and tell their mama, oh, he done took it. He done, he done took it from me, knowing you ain't took nothing from her. But she mad at you, and she know that's the best way to get you back. Yeah. Hey, man. The nigga Dre, Dre James be having me laughing, but he right. You was tripping to me if you was in high school messing with middle school girls. <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely a fact. 
That was weird. That was that would be weird. You up in high school, you ain't got no business messing with no little girl in no middle school, man. But that's just like junior high school. You ain't messing with a girl in elementary. Exactly, bro. You know what I mean? So, my yeah. girlfriend is third grade. Look, you were seventh. You talking about my girlfriend is sixth third grade. grade. My girl in sixth grade. My girl in fifth grade. <laughs> Nigga, be off with your head. <laughs> whole, Yo, clown, whole class yeah. counting you. You're getting socked upside the head at lunchtime. <laughs> high, high, bitches. Nigga, out of there, man. Man, that's true, though. Yeah, Drake James on his on point tonight. Yeah, he on point, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. They were they was doing it when I graduated ten years ago. That's what I'm saying. They were doing it over thirty years ago. Really? They probably was doing it when my father was in school. They probably been doing it since the beginning of time. Who knows? They can't wait for the COVID to be up so they can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know how many probably already sneaking through windows getting COVID coochie? I'm trying to tell you, bro. I wonder how many people actually caught this shit from doing some creepy shit, creeping on or coming under contact with some, you know, we'll never know that. How motherfuckers contracted it the different ways, all of the different ways. This is an ancient old debate, Corey Bird. <laughs> Women can't be predators, but as men, we accept it. We not running telling that this woman done took this from me. Nigga, my three first baby mamas was all older than me. They was all out of high school, 19, 18, 20. Nigga, I was 15. <laughs> I swear, when I got out, they put me all, they, they, two of them put me on child support. And I told them, I said, I, I'm going to try to look off into filing charges on y'all. Because y'all you knew I was underage back then and stuff. You know, and it's no, <laughs> I think I, I should have probably did this shit up here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker raped me, man. And you don't ever call it. No, nah, but I paid that shit down. My kids is grown. I got grandkids by them kids now, so I don't trip. <laughs> Tori Thomas said, most men are willing victims. I was damn sure that. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. slave to it. I didn't get that lucky, though. Lucky, though. Uh, I was grown when I started getting the older women. I was off the chain, homie. I just got to mess with girls my age that was already fast. That was already yeah. in the game. And that, and that really scarred me too, man. I feel yeah. like it scarred me too, man. But them were great memories, though. Then when I got home from prison, all my baby mamas were younger than me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah, really, really, really going to scar you when you're 55 and you're looking at this lady with a wrinkled face and hair falling out and gray all over the place. But when I, when I see my baby mamas looking like that later, when you see the older baby mamas looking like yeah, that, yeah. yeah, booty falling all over the place, I mean, they may have some diapers on. Navel as big as your kneecap. All that man, feet dusty and like <laughs> got calluses on the bottom of their feet, like barefoot pookie. Hold out, I'm talking about man in last place. Hold out. And we gotta accept that though. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about them baby mamas, the coochie don't never get bad, do it? Man, I don't know. And <laughs> it's over, it's over, loco. Uh, yeah, it's over. You know how I get down, bro. I'm retarded. Okay. Yeah, well, it's over, it's over with for me. That's why I always used to warn them. Look. Now listen, it's gonna be over forever. <laughs> Next thing you do, goddamn, I'm like the three strike law, nigga. You can do something small and it's over. <laughs> <laughs>